how things turn quickly on the water as we see all the time on this channel and kind of like we see in these images here where the LGN carrier SM Jiju Long 1 collided with a cargo ship near Yoseo Island, South Korea just a few weeks back. The accident occurred approximately 6 miles southwest of the coastline. The Wando Coast Guard was quick to respond to this one and was able to successfully rescue all 77 crew members involved without any injuries. The vessels did suffer some pretty heavy damage, but most of it was above the waterline, so neither vessel was in any major danger of sinking, but still a pretty wild scene just like some of the things we'll see in this week's episode of Boating News of the Week. Our first story to make the boating news this week is going to take us over to the coast of Australia where this was the scene just a little over a week ago when a group of three crewmen went out deciding to go snorkeling when all of a sudden their tinny was struck by a rogue wave tossing the vessel upside down and sending the three crewmen overboard. Fortunately for these three, the vessel actually had an e on board and the moment the vessel flipped over and started to sink, it sent an emergency radio beacon to local crews so they knew that the vessel was in trouble and rescue could be initiated. The crews still wound up bobbing in the water for almost two hours before rescue crews could make it to them. By the time rescue crews arrived, all three men did have life vests on, but they also commended the crew for having an e on board as that one instrument probably saved their lives. Our next story to make the boating news this week is going to take us over to the Netherlands where this was the scene just a few days ago where a container vessel was trying to navigate under Rotterdam's Willemsburg Bridge when all of a sudden the vessel became stuck as the tide was too high and the captain had not correctly measured the height of his vessel compared to the current clearance of the bridge. According to reports from local authorities, at least two containers were knocked off the vessel due to the collision with the bridge. Fortunately, both the containers were empty and authorities were able to successfully pull them out of the water so they would not pose a threat to any additional vessels in the area. Local authorities wound up closing the bridge immediately following the collision until they could get the vessel pulled out several hours later and have officials come in and assess any damage to the bridge. Local officials' major concerns with damage to the bridge involved the fact that the bridge actually carried gas and electrical lines across the bridge to the other side of the water. After the inspection, it showed some damage to some currently unused pipes underneath the bridge that carry both gas and water, as well as damage to some decorative lighting on the bridge. Fortunately, authorities saw no major structural damage to the bridge and were able to get it open several hours later, but this is not the first time this bridge has been hit. Due to extreme tides in the area, this is actually the third time this bridge has been hit. It actually had similar circumstances with collisions back in 2022 and 2020 as well. Fortunately, in this situation, no injuries were reported. Our next story to make the boating news this week is going to take us across the pond and really is going to come more as a happy birthday or happy anniversary message, depending on how you want to put it. As the RNLI was actually founded on March 4th, 1824, marking its 200th anniversary just a few days ago. The RNLI, for those who don't know, is the Royal National Lifeboat Institute. And this is a charity organization ran by volunteers and mostly funded by public donations. A direct quote from the RNLI says the RNLI relies on thousands of dedicated volunteers to run their life-saving service. Separate from the Coast Guard and independent from the government, they are a charity that aims to serve everyone and especially focused on saving lives at sea. The RNLI's operational crews are 97% volunteers. That means mostly made up of people who might be working in an office on Thursday and saving lives on a Saturday. And saving lives they do. Since the RNLI's inception, they have rescued over 144,000 people, which is extremely impressive, especially considering this is not a military-run group. This is just your average Joe going out there saving somebody's life on their free time. So happy birthday to the RNLI and thanks to all the members who go out there and risk their lives to save others. Thanks for watching, crew. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Boating News of the Week. If you ever see anything crazy happening out on your waterways, be sure to hit us up on Facebook or Instagram and let us know, and you might see your stories over here. Just like Adam Coolidge, Michael Koonsman85, and Alex Poot did this week. And if you guys haven't already, go ahead and drop an anchor on the subscribe button here.